Okay, I am Chris Stevens for Rhino Radio. Yeah. I'm joined by the wonderful I Told You I Would Eat You. Hello. How are we all doing today? Good. Good. Uh, yeah, I'll tell you what, I'm going to have to like lie across or something, yeah, aren't no, I? Please Should do. we do this? Right. <laughs> right, okay, I will do this for you. I don't know if you can see me in the set, but we're, we're doing this now, apparently. So, Hello. would you all like Not to... Uh, okay, let's, am I in shot now? Fantastic, hey, we're doing it like this. <laughs> Could you all in- introduce yourselves for me? Hi, I'm Alexi from I Told You I'd Eat You. I'm Josh, I'm also in I Told You I'd Eat You. Hi, I'm, I'm Joey and uh, I'm in I Told You I'd Eat You. Well, my name's Sean and um, unfortunately I'm also in I Told You I'd Eat You. Yeah. <laughs> Sadly I'm not. Anyway, I'm, let's start off with the biggest conspiracy theory of 2003 so far. Oh no! Frank oh. Turner, does he have arms or not? Categorically, is a categorical no from yeah. me, buddy. <laughs> I mean, it's 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 a exasperatedly disappointed no. Yeah. It's one of those things that as soon as it's pointed out to you, you can't not see it. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, you can see the yeah. red circles. The fact I mean, is, I mean, Josh and I were talking about this earlier. The people deserve better. <laughs> You know, oh, you know when you're being lied to, and the man's got yeah. no arms. Like. I mean, you know when you look at the pixels and you know that it's been shopped. It's been shopped. The, yeah. You know, <laughs> or bringing it, bring it all the way back to 2009 with that one there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Have me. we got a favourite theory so far about it? Oh, you know what? Our art guy Sam Chevy Blazer. Boston Dynamics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> Our, our guy Chevy Blazer was saying it wasn't so much, you know, some people are saying it's Photoshop, things like that. But what Sam was saying was uh, like, it's not so much that, it's like, think about the last time you saw a picture of Frank Turner, right? Really think about it. Did he have arms? And you answer your own question. You know what I mean? It was like when I was watching him last night, I couldn't see arms. I was that oh, far away. Could you? There's so many people that have said that this weekend. It's like people have finally started to realise. A series of levers and pulleys. and yeah. It's an elaborate Rube Goldberg machine, the end result of which is what you see. I think he's worked like a puppet more than anything. Oh, like a puppet? Yeah, yeah. he is a puppet. I heard Taylor's this one guy saying that instead of arms, he just had another Frank Turner here and a third Frank Turner there. <laughs> And one sneaky Frank Carter thrown in for good luck as well. Yeah, but they prearranged it before. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, of course. It's a media thing. And I think it goes without saying that the budget for this sort of thing is astronomical. And, you know, there are... Like, have you ever seen that movie Contact? <laughs> <laughs> like, you know that movie Contact? You know, when they have to, you know, like, build a huge thing and it costs loads of money to make Contact? Okay. I it's like that. I, have, I feel like you haven't seen the movie Contact. <laughs> <laughs> That's besides the point. Right, are you there. describing the movie Arrival? <laughs> so have you seen that movie Arrival? <laughs> oh, yeah. So, right, yeah. so we uh, continue on a little bit. Yeah, um, we have just had Pride Month last month. Um, and I know that you are all um, big fans of that kind of thing. Yes. Um, <laughs> big fan of that kind of thing. Indeed. Indeed. Big fan of the gays. Um, you also put on Queer Festival for Great Escape, right? Yeah. yeah Which, yeah, from what I heard, was awesome. Yeah. Um, and I know that you do a lot of your videos with clumsy bodies. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, now, what, as you guys are all the part of the community yeah. in that way, is there something that you think that we can do, be doing better to be more welcoming to people? And how have you kind of like dealt with more aggressive, like, uh, aggressive behaviour towards yourselves in that way? Yeah, well, th- thank you for asking that kind of thing. Like, well, I mean... I think what matters to us, I mean, I speak about me and Sean are both non-binary. Yeah. So we don't want to, you want a little pillow for yourself there. (laughs) Um, So, obviously, you know, there was, uh, there are elements of stuff that makes you uncomfortable and stuff like that when you go into the scene. But what uh, struck me so much was uh, how often the people didn't realise that, right? Yeah. You know, uh, you get artists that sell, you know, their version of being kind or whatever or being nice to people and it's kind of a bit twisted. So, you know, you get tied up with certain ideas being nice ideas and being bad ideas, you know what I mean? So you can't question these sort of monoliths. But that's knowing that, you know, obviously there are individuals who perpetuate that sort of thing, but a lot of people are just kind of don't know about it and are more than happy to learn. Um, 
And that's not me saying that there's been no struggle, that there's no difficulties and stuff like that. It's more me saying that like there are people who, I mean, obviously, we, Sean and I have different experiences, we have yeah. you know, different struggles and stuff like that. But like the, the issue that seems to be perhaps more pernicious right now in you know what you ever call the alt rock or math rock or yeah. emo scene is these these issues are as much racial as they are otherwise you know what i mean mm-hmm. we're not discriminated against for our race but a lot of people are and i yeah. feel like i'm more likely to see a fellow queer kid at a show than i am a person of color and that's really fucked up that's fair to hear yeah it's it's, it's we were talking, we were chatting about it earlier like that is it's all of our responsibility in a certain way to try and realize how we can do better because you know it's, it's an old cliche but like you genuinely do have to be the change that you want to see yeah. like you do have to actually like you know buck up your ideas a bit and think oh okay maybe i'm a bit of a bastard in these ways that's fine let's do better yeah. and let's you know try and listen to other people who know better how to do better as well and just open up the whole thing be super fucking open-minded just yeah just yeah yeah you feel well like I've, I've, I've rambled my way to a conclusion somewhat there maybe <laughs> good conclusion uh, we'll move on to Disney for a moment oh. how do you feel about them constantly remaking all of the uh, all of all the, their films into like I, real I time I do have a crazy opinion about this okay. I think it's actually very good business sense okay. because a lot of these things that a they're... lot of people don't say this but <laughs> Disney makes so they make a lot of money <laughs> off of these remakes right. shout out Michael Eisner am I right oh but like <laughs> woo so sorry uh, my opinion on that is that like the stuff that they're remaking right if you look it up a lot of it is approaching the end of its like lifetime as a trademark yeah. and the only way they can justify owning that trademark is to create a new product with the trademark right so like Dumbo was literally coming up to that 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 end of the window but I think Little Mermaid is around the same time right so it, honestly at the end of the day I didn't like Dumbo I don't think anyone cares whether or not I like Dumbo but like Tim Burton's a dickhead man <laughs> Shots fired. <laughs> Holy shit, you're covering the I told you I need you Tim Burton nah, people. I so mean, you're never getting a Tim Burton music video then? Apparently not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but Shot like, cry. yeah. From Tim Burton. Um, so you've also recently played a gig with Hello Goodbye. And uh, obviously, I met you guys when you first when I when I first met you guys when you yeah. played Daphne Daphne and Celeste support, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was which so was an sick. amazing night at the Boston Music Room. Yeah, um, now, if you could have any other artist from the '90s or 2000s, early 2000s, make a comeback, and you could be the support for them, Sunny who Day would it be? Wait, wait. Shall we do one each? Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> who are we gonna go with? We go over here. A '90s act you want to support? Okay, well, I'm definitely. I'm the old man of the band, so for me it would be a band called North and South. Okay. They were, a kind of, I guess, a precursor to the S Club 7 model in that they existed oh, wow. both as a TV series and a band. Oh, sick. And by the second series they'd sort of realised no one cared about that kind of thing, so... <laughs> so, um, it was basically one of the most amazing budget sci-fi series I've ever seen accidentally on the BBC was North and South and their music was terrible but I just want to see more of that so I mean like you guys pick some cool ass indie bands that do the music thing that gives you the goosebumps and all that but I, I would like to see North and South 2020 please okay oh no I don't want to think about it <laughs> Damn it! that was your one shot just your one shot you fucked it mate Yo, I mean <laughs> You know, I, I was, I was while Lex was talking, I was trying to think of bands, but all of them have already reformed, and we didn't support them. <laughs> so, I mean, obviously, let's pretend it's three years ago. Okay. Yo, it'd be wild if the Spice Girls reunited. We'd love to do that. Too. I had a feeling you might that'd say that. That'd be wild. Do you think that'd the be... Spice Girls are gonna reunite? No. Apparently, there's rifts with uh, with Jerry and Vicky. Super. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, for me, I would say Spice Girls. Uh, but yeah, no, uh, absolutely and categorically, Sunny Day Real Estate, aka the world's Never greatest ever. band. 
Okay, um, so let's bring it to an end. This has been, a, <laughs> I've had a whale of a time. This has been an amazing interview. We've loved it. Uh, <laughs> what can we expect from you in the future? Obviously, you've got Odearism out now. Yeah. Were we writing? Is there uh, anything we can expect soon? Yeah, writing loads and loads of tunes for the second album. Uh, doing, gonna put together a big old London show, big party thing uh, towards the au- end of autumn. Oh, it's probably going to be more winter time. More now, winter yeah. time, yeah, okay. uh, kind of there. So keep an eye out for that. We're playing in Trowbridge. It's an interesting name for Trowbridge. a place. Trowbridge. Trowbridge. <laughs> Trowbridge. I think. I think. Oh god! Any anyone from the, the the Trowbridge who wants to correct us, please Fantastic. keep yourselves to yourselves. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> yeah, we're playing that next weekend. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, we just ran a lot of shit, that's all I can say. Yeah, there's people doing their jobs. I think you know. we're done here. Anyway, I've been Short Chris of the Short Kiss Rock Show on Rhino Radio. This is the wonderful I Told You I Would Eat You. We'll see you soon. <laughs>